Hey guys, Chris again from ClassicVWBugs.com and in this video I want to quickly go over the 1966 model year Beetle uh, and as you can see here we are working on a 66 for a great client of ours that we're putting together and uh, just uh, basically in the assembly process now we did a complete body off restoration on this car and uh, you can see the pictures uh, on my website they, the link is in the description below uh, so I want to quickly go over the one year features, the changes that happen from after 65 and uh, what makes the 66 kind of a unique year uh, very close to even kind of how unique a 67 is uh, so I'll go over them with you right now so all right 66 as you can see here 1300 you see the only year they had this emblem in the American market uh, so 1300 model uh, motor was in uh, the 66 Beetle and that's where it started I think pretty much across the, the world uh, but in America, it was the only year they had the 1300. They, it, the 1300 did go onward in other locations around the globe. Uh, so what's really nice about the 1300 motor is that it's a step up from the 1200. But what's really nice about it is that you can upgrade this motor to be a 1600 or a 1641, which is what this motor is. Uh, big bore piston and cylinder kit. You do not have to machine the block uh, to... Uh, to, to get more power out of this motor. You just get the bigger pistons and cylinders. You will have to get 1500 or 1600 uh, cylinders heads uh, to work. The 1300 heads will not work, but they'll bolt right up to the big bore piston and cylinders. To, and you can use the existing tins uh, from the 1300 motor and keep everything looking like a 1300. Just keep everything else the same, tin work, manifolds, everything else. Uh, and what's really nice is, you know, this motor is actually gonna be a, a, a 12 volt conversion uh, so what we're doing is, is uh, we have the 12-volt generator on there, and you can get the replacement stand uh, to work with the 12-volt generator. Uh, or you can go still stay 6-volt, and you keep the regulator on top. Now, what a lot of people do is what I don't really care for is, you know, when you go in 12-volt, they put a regulator somewhere mounted on the engine compartment, whether it's on the, the bottom shroud, uh, bottom uh, tinware here, the top of the fan shroud, or they mount it on the back. Uh, what I recommend doing is actually doing what they did in 67, which is that change where they put the regulator, since 67 was a 12-volt car, they put the regulator under the back seat. So I'll show you here. See where we have the regulator mount. I'm going to mount the regulator right there under the back seat. That's the proper way to do it. Um, just kind of keep it out of the way and just download a 67 schematic and you can hook your regulator up. So I have my wiring harness here. I don't know if you can see that. So right here's our wiring harness so what I'll do is I'll cut a slit in the wiring harness open up the wires a little bit and connect the, the proper wires to the regulator to make that work and then the rest will then feed back out and into the engine compartment so let's keep moving onward again 65 was the year where everything got bigger the windows got bigger here windows here vent windows changed scrapers okay the molding for the scrapers you know comes to the end now here uh, back windows, pop-out windows uh, got bigger, back, bigger back window. Uh, so, and then also the wiring harness stopped going through the roof here because now this post is a lot smaller and now it runs down the channel of the heater channel along that side and then out the back. Uh, so uh, 66 was uh, the first year where they actually got rid of the um, the dimmer, or so the, the high and low beam switch used to be down here on the firewall. Now it's up in the trunk. I'll show you here. So now you have that switch here. Um, you have the, okay, the dimmer switch here, the high and low beam switch, and then you have a flasher over here. Very similar to what they started doing in 67. So just make sure if you are going to go 12 volt to, you know, make sure you get the proper uh, equipment for 12 volts so these are 12 volt flashers and such so you're going to want to make that work correctly so they might be difficult to get uh, 6 volt with these I'm not really sure I haven't really hunted for them but if you guys know of a, a place to get these in 6 volt to keep everything stock you know uh, please do leave a comment below but that's this is the first year where they started doing this kind of a setup with the wiring harness 66 is also the first year where they started using the flasher uh, so if you can get a if you get this set up correctly for your 66, that's pretty unique as well. Uh, you know, from here on, where uh, all Beatles had a flasher. 
So going back to the high and low beam switch, uh, remember now when you have your steering wheel on and you have your, your turn switch uh, all hooked up, so to, to adjust your high and low beam was the, the snap at the back of the turn switch. It would go click, 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 and that's a you know, um, major high and low beam uh, work on this as opposed to the foot uh, press at the bottom. 66 was also the first year where they went to this uh, style of a rim. Uh, so this is the slotted five lug rim when you had the flat hubcap. So you got rid of the moon shaped hubcap and there was no clips now on the rim. And now you have these nubs in here where the, the hubcap will wedge into to hold inside here. It's a two year only rim, 66, 67. That is it. Um, I, I like these rims. Uh, the hubcaps can be problematic sometimes. I mean, just to snap them into place, especially with the aftermarket, it's one little you know, pop with your hand to try to get it into this rim here and you wind up denting the hub, hubcap because it's, it's flat as opposed to a dome shape which had more you know, structural integrity where you can, you can really wrap the dome hubcap without really denting it. Uh, but yeah, this is the start of that rim. 66 was also the last year of the teardrop uh, deck lid. So the engine lid here, let's back up. You see it's the, it still has the swoop here, okay? It's the last year they went to that, 60, uh, last year they, they offered this. Uh, 67 is when they started squaring off the bottom. Uh, also wanna point out that 66 was the last year of the Porsche style headlight. So they, in America that is. So what you see here is uh, brand new headlight assemblies that we're putting on this bug and it's the last year of these uh, headlights. 67 was the first year in the American market for the straight headlight. 66 was also the first year for the ball joint front end. Uh, before that it was King and Link pin front end, so they were starting to get a little more advanced here and going with a ball joint front end. Uh, the drive was a little bit better in these years, to, I guess as opposed to the, the King and Link pin, even though you, know, you can adjust things uh, correctly these days and uh, it's really tough to tell. Uh, which front end you have, but uh, I mean, unless you have an oval window or a split window, you can kind of feel the, the hardships of those uh, cars when you drive on the road. But uh, yeah, first year of the ball joint front end. One of the cool features of 66 is that it also has a one year interior color combination and seat pattern, door panel situation. Uh, it's funny, in the 60s, um, from basically, I think, 64, 65, 66, 67, they all had like one year features on their uh, seat upholstery, floors, door panels, that sort of thing. Color combinations were like one, one year only sort of stuff. Um, but what we have here is this is a custom interior. So I'm gonna just kind of model this, uh, but I'll, I'll throw some examples up on, uh, on this video to, to show you what was correct for 66. This is more of a vintage style that we're doing. Again, one of our signature interior kits that we have going into this metallic gunmetal gray 66 uh, sunroof. So this is more of a vintage style pattern here, but 66 would have had a one year door panel and seat upholstery uh, set up along with the carpet. Um, so I'm gonna throw some examples up here, but uh, what, I, what they usually have is, and again, Wolfsburg West is the only place on the internet that I know of that sells the correct combination and pattern and stitch for 66. Uh, 66 would have had a not no stitching here like this. It would have been like more of a square feature here. The line would have came down the stitching, went straight across, and then looped up again, similar to what the TMI uh, door panels offer, the common door panel that's offered. But it would have been flattened here. It wouldn't have been stitched like you see here. So it would have been more of a rectangular uh, fashion here. And then you would have had one more rectangular uh, fashion down at the bottom. Okay, and again, it would have been just a, a plain panel, either off-white, black, uh, nothing fancy, red, uh, you know, no two-tone really like they would have had in the previous years. So, and then what was amazing in 66 is they brought back the chrome trim that they would have had in the 50s on the door panels, uh, but the trim was a little bit lower and it, it was uh, straight across on the driver's side, because again on the driver's side there was no armrest, um, but then if on the passenger side when you have the armrest in the middle here, you would have the trim was broken. It goes from here, armrest, and then another trim piece. Seat upholstery was also unique in 66 where it was kind of similar to this fashion like you see here. You would have smooth vinyl here um, on the, the outer edges, right? And around the back, okay? But your center 
would have been like a, a basket weave material in the same similar color so if you had a red seat um, you would have had red you know flat vinyl here basket weave in the center red vinyl and then uh, smooth red vinyl here and again it would have wrapped over like you see here okay a lot of the uh, TMI kits that are on the market today from other vendors besides Wolfsburg you know they, they sell a generic kit and there's always a seam at the top here that was never correct on a uh, on a 66 Beetle or 67 or even 65 so I guess they just kind of make it to you know accommodate all the years but if you want to correct again the correct interior would be from Wolfsburg West now uh, some interesting things that I noticed in some of the colors that they offered um, so say black for instance if you had a black car you most likely would have had a, a, a red interior not a burgundy like this more of a red interior and it wasn't a really hot red it was very much a uh, a darker red uh, close to a burgundy I would say um, I, I see a lot of that salmon looking uh, red on the market and, and in, ma in many cars these days and it's not correct um, for a 66 uh, but what would have been interesting in a black car so say even this gray car right here and say you had a red interior or something the carpet also would have had a red uh, look a uh, red um, color to it uh, which is interesting so the red was all over the interior really when it came to uh, a 66 Beetle depending on the color of your car if you wanted a Bahama blue I do believe it would have been more of the uh, the gray carpeting it wouldn't have been the blue uh, but I do remember seeing black um, and even uh, um, uh, pearl white uh, 66 uh, Beetles would have had the red seats with the red carpet uh, so it's, it's pretty interesting it's just the one year they really did that Coming back to the deck lid again, it's just, I'm just going along here. As things pop into my head, the 66 was also the last year of the smaller license light housing uh, that started in 64. So 64, 65, 66 had that same style license housing. Once they went to 67, the license housing got wider. Uh, it stretched a little bit further on the deck lid. 66 was also an oddball year when it came to door handles. So you still had this style door handle basically from the look of 64 or actually even later than that so uh, 64 style handle to 66 mid 66 had this style here um, and there were changes I know before 64 the, there was another change so I think like from 60 to 63 you had this style push button but it did change its mech uh, back here I believe uh, please correct me if I'm wrong guys in the comment section but once um, uh, mid to late 66 came around, they started changing then the handle to look more 67 style, which had the round uh, button here instead of the square button. Uh, so th odd stuff that they started doing in mid-year uh, that Volkswagen would do. Um, just <laughs> pretty nutty. So it could be a problem year. So you have to look at your VIN number on your 66 to you know, make sure you have to get the correct uh, door handle because the mechanism inside the door has to match correctly with this uh, this outside handle so um, do look that up most places like Wolfsburg West or CIP1.com when you look up the outer door handle they'll give the VIN number you know before or after that you know this handle will work for Another change that happened this year was uh, things started to go black. So you had a black steering wheel, you'd have a black steering column, a black shifter, a black e-brake, and then even your seat frames like we have over here uh, were black as well. I weren't like a black black. I mean, supposedly they were like a gray black, that sort of thing, but uh, we just kind of get uh, straight black, gloss black to put on our frames. Uh, makes it look nicer. So here's our steering column. Even the divider bar, the bar in the back that holds the back seat was also black as well. So everything started to go black in this period and basically from here on out, uh, even into the late 70s, that was it. The seat frames were black, uh, the accents were black on the inside. So, but uh, oddly enough, the, um, the dash stuff, like say the knobs and things still stayed in ivory or a gray, off, off gray, off white sort of thing. So you still, like we have the, the ivory knobs there. So they didn't go to black knobs until 67 when they were black rubber. So that's about it for this video. It's uh, about what is off the top of my head when it comes to you know, first looking at a, a 66 and some of the changes that happened. 
uh, and some of the things that uh, either stayed or, or went on after this point. Um, so if you guys want to add any other uh, tidbits that I forgot, uh, please put them in the comment section below. Love to keep the combo going. And if you can too, be sure to like this video, share it, get it out there, ring that bell, get notifications, sus subscribe to my channel. Uh, that would be excellent. And then uh, I do have a PayPal link in the uh, description below for a small donation if you could. For the price of a cup of coffee, you can uh, throw, me, throw us a couple bucks. We can keep this content going, keep the knowledge going, spread the word, and uh, keep the vintage Volkswagens alive and on the road. Um, whatever you can afford is fine with us, and uh, we thank you for whatever donations you can throw our way. It's great. Thank you, guys. All right, so that's that video. I'll see you next time.